This is John Mount again from WinVector LLC, a data science research, development, and training company. In my last article, I displayed a graph where we, as a function of the number of training rows, plotted a loss or criticism of the behavior of a model. In this case, at least squares a linear regression model. So on the y-axis, we have our loss, RMSE, and being a loss or criticism smaller is better. And we have our number of training rows we trained the model on. And obviously, number of training rows bigger is better. Now, for that graph, I started the graph in the sort of safe zone, where we have many more training examples than model parameters. I put a vertical stroke here where the two are equal, where the number of training rows equals the number of model parameters. And because we started in the safe zone, we got some behaviors we expected. The first was that training performance gets worse as you add more training data. That at first might be a surprise, but when you think, think it through, basically training is getting not worse and worse at lying to you about its future performance. We also saw that held out data, which we either have or can simulate through cross methods, its behavior gets better as we add more training data. So we learn fewer of the idiosyncrasies of the training set before us or the sample and more of the true statistics of the unknown population that we're on the hook for in future application data. Now, the new thing is what if we extend this graph more to the left as we've done here and show the more low data situations. Now, the first thing to notice is the training error is zero for every instance up to and including the number of training examples is at least the number of parameters. That makes sense. Without any repetitions, which are very low probability in this model, the, um, the system can perfectly match the training data. And this is anticipated when you have an adjusted degrees of, degrees of freedom adjusted statistic because it says that the number of scale up is undefined or infinite and because it doesn't know how to scale up zero error into what the out of sample error of an ideal model will be. Remember, one of the points of the last paper, the adjustments that we typically use in statistics do not calculate the expected out of sample performance of your model. They calculate how much explainable variation is present, which your model may not yet have explained. Now, what is weird is the spike. We call this the M equals N spike, but it's also called the double descent phenomena. What it is, is right when we have the number of parameters equals the number of training datums, the model's fit is completely determined by the training data until we add an additional condition such as regularization, which I highly recommend. In that situation, the expected error on new out of sample data from the same distribution as the training data, that expected error doesn't even exist. It is infinite. And so for any finite sample, we get a few dots, we experience various different errors, but the more times we repeat the experiment, the larger errors we see. So we think this spike is large, but ideally it's actually infinite, uh, which is not an ideal situation. And then the uh, training out of sample performance falls off as we lower the number of uh, training rows, uh, largely because at this point, the model is no longer really a function so much of the training data, but also the training data and strong regularization conditions. So the way to get rid of the spike is to have more data and or regularize. And this is uh, this spike is really interesting in the article that I want to share with you, link is in the screen, it has a great derivation of what causes this, why it's inevitable, and again, how you fix it is cross-validating for good regularization value. Thank you very much for your time. That was um, what I wanted to talk about. My name was John Mount. I'm from WinVector LLC, a data science consulting, research, development, and training corporation. Thank you.